I do not have a time for this. Hey, Pinnacle Studio peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from PinnacleStudioPro.com. Today I'm going to show you how to add a time code to your videos, and I'm going to show you how to do that using Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 20 Ultimate, and I'm about to give my Pinnacle Studio peeps a little bit of time code 101. Time code is used to show when an event taking place in a video occurred. Instead of going back to the video file to see when it was created, time code displays the time on the screen along with the video. Pinnacle Studio doesn't import and display native time code from source video, but there's a montage template called time code that we can use to go ahead and add a time code to our video. So first I'm going to show you how to find that template. So I'm going to go up here to open up a new tab. And now I'm going to go over to navigation. And then I want to go down to content. And from here, I want to go down to montages and templates. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to open that in the tab and now I'm going to scroll down until I find video time code. So now I know that I have what I want in my montages and templates tab, but what I want to do next is add a video to the timeline. So I'm going to go to one of my open tabs here and I want to add this video, but before I add it, I want to know when it was created in case I want to use that as my starting time code. Now, I don't have to use it as my starting time code, but I'm going to show you how to view it. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go down to display information. Here I can see when it was created. It has the date and a time. So I know it was created at 1027 PM. So if I want to go ahead and use that as my time code, I can. Also, I know the duration is 25 seconds and 18 frames. And if I need to know the frame rate, I can get that here as well. This is a 30 frame per second video clip. So now that I know all that information, I'm going to drag this down to the timeline. Now that I have this in the timeline, I want to go back to my montages and templates that I opened up and back to the time code montage. I'm going to left click it, hold down my left mouse button and drag it on top of this video clip. And now here in the preview, you'll see there's time code that was added to the video. So I want to make this the same length as my project or the same length as my clip. If I'm just making it the same length of a clip, I can place my cursor at the end of the montage template until I see a arrow in a line, hold down my left mouse, drag it out. If I'm making it the same duration as my entire project, then I can right click on it, go to adjust duration. And then I can just type in the duration of the project so I don't have to drag a line and an arrow all the way across everything. So I'm going to close this out. And now I want to edit this montage template so that it matches the time, the source, and all the things that I want to do. So I can either double left click it to open up the montage editor or I can right click it and then go to edit montage. So on the right hand side of the screen, we have some settings that we can edit. There's two sections. There's a time code options and then there's another section called display options. 
So under time code options, we have system, format, source, and start time code. The system option lets you choose between five options. Auto detects the time code from your current project settings. NTSC is the standard for North America. NTSC drop frame compensates for the fact that the NTSC frame rate of 29.97 frames per second is 0 0.03 frames per second slower than the nearest whole number frame rate, which is 30 frames per second. So time code can only be represented by whole numbers. So since 29.97 is not a whole number, what happens with the drop frame time code is that the numbers are periodically skipped for this setting so that it can fit in the 29.97 frame rate. So after that, we have PAL, and PAL is the standard for Europe. And then we have seconds, which is pretty much self-explanatory. I'm gonna choose NTSC. So next we have format. Now, time, whether it's 12 hours or 24 hours, doesn't matter. It actually lets you view hours, minutes, and seconds. If you choose frames, that allows you to view each frame that goes by. So instead of time, it's really frames. And then the SMPTE standard is a blend of hours, minutes, seconds, and then frames. So it gives you the best of both worlds. This is the one that I'm gonna choose for this demonstration. And then after that, we have source. So timeline starts to counter wherever the clip starts on the timeline. Manual allows you to manually enter the start time. And then you have montage clip. So like I said at the beginning, Pinnacle Studio can't pull the data from the clip. And plus, you can't add any clips to this montage. As you can see on the, the bar where you would usually add clips, you can't add any clips. So you can't get it from the montage clip. So the montage clip option is really dead. It doesn't affect anything. It doesn't work. So I'm gonna choose manual. So next we have display options. The first option is burn in bar. So you can enable or disable it here with this check mark. And I always leave the burn in bar there. What it does is it adds a rectangular background behind the time code, which helps you uh, be able to see the time code because things are gonna be changing in the video and you wanna make sure that you can always see the time, then you wanna add this burn in bar behind it. You could change the color of the burn in bar here if you like. Most people leave it at black. And then we have uh, position X and that adjusts the location of the time code horizontally. And then we have position Y which adjusts it uh, vertically. And then we have size, which will change the size of the font and the burning bar if you want it to be larger or smaller. So once you got all your options set how you want, you just click on OK. And now if we play this, you'll see the time code goes along with the video. And that's it, people. Time code for your videos. I want to thank you guys for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps. I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out to one of my subscribers, Rave Rocks. Rave Rocks channel focuses on music videos. So do me a favor. Head over to his channel. Check out some of his videos. If you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you want to receive a shout out like Rave Rocks did, then make sure that you go to the video description and click on the shout out request form. Also, if you want to get a tutorial request in, you got to go to the video description and click on the tutorial request form. And then I'll make a decision on whether or not I'll make that tutorial for you. 
Now, I need you to do something for me. The thumb, the one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. Also, if you want to talk, you got any comments, you got any questions, go down to the comment section and leave me a comment there. And last but not least, smash the subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you do that, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube, and that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.